There's a lot of really cool things you can do with particles to bring your game to life. Whether it's floating dust particles, the flames in your torch, grass that explodes up into the air when you slice it, or enemies who just go spewing all over the place when you destroy them, particles can really add a lot to make your game feel lived in and like it's actually interacting with the player. So in this series, we're going to look at a different way to use particles in each video that will hopefully be helpful for you and also give you a good feel for what particles can do. Let's get started. All right, so the first effect we're going to look at is how to create dust particles when your player changes direction. To do this, we're going to head on over to our hierarchy. You can right click. We're going to go to effects and add particle system. This starts us spewing up squares into the universe, which is not the effect we want, but we'll get there. So first off, let's just come over to our transform and I'm just gonna set my Z value to zero and my rotation as well to zero. You'll notice that right away makes a huge difference in what's going on. The X and Y value obviously can change depending on where you wanna drag these things. All right, so let's make this a little less of an eyesore. So first off, let's take our duration down to 0.1, which just already starts to make things look a little better. Eventually we'll take off looping as obviously we don't want the dust effect to keep looping, but while we're just designing it, it's helpful. You can head to particles and hit play to bring them back. At this point you can take the start lifetime and bring that down to about 0.5. All right, things are already starting to look a little better. Now our simulation space is set to local. That just means that its rotation and position are going to follow um, an object that it's relative to. So for example, if I put it on the player and the player rotates, it would rotate the dust, but we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna make this world space. That way once the player emits the dust, the dust kind of reacts with the world naturally and doesn't care too much what the player does. All right, let's head on to emission next. Now there's a lot going on in particle effects. We're just gonna use a few of them in this video and in each other video I look at, we'll use some different ones. So you get a feel for all the different options that are available with particles. We head into emission right now. We're just gonna make one change right here, which is just, we're gonna make the rate over time 100, which just gives us a much more diffuse um, use of particles. By the way, up in our particle system, I just forgot to change our size to 0.1. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit like dust. All right, we can close up emission now and let's head to shape. Now the shape is just obviously what shape this emits in. Right now it's creating a cone, which isn't bad, but I'm actually going to use a box for this one, which will just keep it in a nice localized area around the player's feet. We're also gonna change our scale in general. I'm gonna go with 0.3 on the X, and this is just the shape of the box that's doing the emission. Um, we're gonna go zero on the Y, and we can leave a one on the Z. Now obviously <laughs> that's not looking like a whole lot at the moment, but don't worry, we'll get there. Next up, we're gonna to go to velocity over time. And this is actually what's gonna change the way this looks so that it actually looks like something is we're gonna make these particles travel. So let's turn that on. And we're gonna use a linear velocity that's gonna have it going at 0.2 backwards and also at 0.2 upwards. And sorry, that was a negative 0.2 on the X. All right, so you'll notice already we're starting to get a little bit more dust-like kind of a look here. Once again, we're gonna change this to world space as well. Now, if you're getting a little worried at this point that that's not really looking the way you want it to, we can go to our particle system and actually just turn off the looping. And when you hit play, oops, that paused a little bit, but when you hit play, you'll notice we get this nice little emission, actually, of particles that looks kind of like dust and works even nicer when you're in motion. All right, we're not quite done just yet. Next thing that we want to head to is our color over lifetime. And this is also going to be important, is what we're going to do is we are going to create um, two different colors. This is going to help our improve our look a lot. We're just gonna click on our color here and we're gonna make a blend so that our particles don't all look the same. So we're gonna have one that is fully white, but then over on the other side, we're gonna have a alpha of zero. I just clicked that little tag up here. And all that's gonna do is mean that our particles can be anywhere from fully opaque to fully transparent. And when I hit play, you'll notice already that that's giving a really nice kind of dusty feel. One optional thing you could do is open up your renderer, and there's not much that we're going to do here this time, but you might want to play with your sorting layers. So if you wanted the dust to render behind specific objects or in front of them, you could pick the layer and then choose the order in layer. For example, if I wanted my dust to be in the background, I might choose background, or I could have it in front of the player. That said, the way I've set things up, default is right behind my player, which is where I want the dust to render, so I'll just leave it there. 
All right, we've now got our dust particle. The trick now is just making it so that it actually plays when we want it to. And I'm just going to grab this and make it a child of my player also. All right, once your particle is created, all that's left is to just make it so that it plays whenever you change direction. And doing this is relatively simple. Now the concept behind playing particles is really quite simple. You just make a public or private reference to your particle system. I'll call mine dust. And then in order to make it play, it's really as simple as just going dust.play. Yeah, it's really that tough. The trick though is to know when to actually play this. And you'll probably want to put this inside of your movement script, wherever it is that you check to see whether or not your player should be flipping. And then simply when the player flips, you would call dust.play. For example, here in my movement script, I check to see if I'm facing right, but my direction is actually turned to the left, or if I'm facing left and my direction's to the right, in which case I call a flip method. My flip method has a whole lot going on, but you'll see that amidst everything else, I do have that line, dust.play. All right, with that done, you should now have all the logic you need to get your player creating dust trails whenever they change direction. You can also throw this into your grounded script so that every time you land on the ground, it plays some particles. They're looking pretty nice. All right, we're gonna be looking at lots more in this series. We'll get into some flames, some grass shooting up in the air, and also explosions when enemies are destroyed. See you in the next video.